Hello, I'm Dominique Foxworth joining you from Podville Media in Washington, D.C. And this is the only football show that's undefeated, never lost. Today, we preview the big game, discuss the lack of black coaches in the NFL, and will a black quarterback make Super Bowl history? Warning, if I were a coach, I would never kick. Let's get the foot out of football, cuz I don't give a damn. Last week, we had the best teams, the best coaches, and the best refs, but still, somehow ended up with some of the worst decisions. Even the all-everything quarterbacks we had made mistakes. Well, the three that are mortal did. Now we have the big, humongous, giant, large football game all set. Youth in the AFC side and Patrick Mahomes versus the old man Brady on the NFC side. Personally, I think the matchup favors Patrick LaVon Mahomes. So you can go ahead and start etching his name in the MVP trophy right now and don't you dare forget the LaVon. Here to break it all down with me is ESPN Bills reporter Marcel Louis Jacques. Welcome to the show, my brother. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure being on. Thanks for the invite. You know, I got a little free time now. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, what happened to your bills, man? Season. What happened to your bills? <laughs> like, man, Kansas City is on a different tier than anybody else in the AFC right now. No shame in it for Buffalo, but they're just not there yet. All right, next year is the year. All right, let's go to the control room for the first discussion topic. Big Trav, what it is. Patrick LaVon Mahomes is headed back to the big game for the second year in a row. What would it mean for Mahomes to become the first black QB to win back-to-back -back titles? It's incredible that it's 2021 and we haven't had a, a black quarterback win back-to-back back-to-back uh, -back Super Bowls. But I think it would be, it would be huge and it would continue this, uh, I don't, I don't want to say trend or, or movement, but it will continue what we're seeing that more and more black quarterbacks are getting opportunities to be quarterbacks, not to be athletes, not to be tight ends or wide receivers, but to be the position that they are destined to be. So, you know, shout out to Patrick Mahomes, the example that he's setting for so many youth and high school quarterbacks in this country who maybe wouldn't have gotten a chance otherwise to show what they can do. Well, Mahomes, it feels like at least in the media and the fans, and we talk about Mahomes, uh, his blackness doesn't come up very often. Like, it feels like it's deprioritized, and it, we don't talk about him, except for in our circles, specifically as a black quarterback. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but we don't have to let it happen, which is why we are leaning in on the LeVon. But I think part of the reason why is that he's been so great, and people love to focus on how fantastic he's been. He's had the most amazing start to a career. How do you go to three AFC Championship games in your first three years, go to two Super Bowls, win one for sure, win a league MVP? It's been incredible. I have no reason to believe that he's not going to keep it going, but please lean in on the LeVon. What's next, Trav? This championship game will feature prominent black coordinators on both sidelines for the Chiefs and the Bucks. What more can the NFL do to help turn black coordinators into head coaches? All right, well, there were a lot of openings this year and it was really painful to watch. So Urban Meyer got a job, not black. Arthur Smith got a job, not black. Brandon Staley got a job, not black. Dan Campbell somehow got a job, not black. Nick Sirianni got a job, not black. Robert Sala got a job. Lebanese, I mean, it's something. The only job that's still available right now is the worst one, the Houston Texans, where they don't have any early draft picks in. Their uh, all pro quarterback is demanding to get out of town. So it's a bad look. And you always hear something's wrong with the pipeline. There's two things that I think about when I hear that. It's like, yes, the pipeline is full. We got Eric Bieniemy, Todd Bowles, Marvin Lewis, Gerard Mayo, Raheem Morris, Jim Caldwell, Leslie Frazier, Aaron Glenn, and Patrick Graham are all black coaches who got um, interviews this cycle. But I also realized that the pipeline doesn't seem to matter. Part of the most frustrating thing about this cycle, and I mean this cycle that happens every year, is when you go outside of the pipeline, I feel like I'm put in this situation where I have to like denigrate the guys that you hire. I don't want to do that. I want to root for Brandon Staley. I'm happy for a D coordinator getting the job, but I'm not blind. I see what's happening. Marcel, what do you think? Consider this a, a public plea to Leslie Frazier. Not like this, man. He, he is a finalist for that Houston Texans job, but that is just, it seems doomed to fail. And, and I think he's going to be an excellent head coach whenever he gets the right opportunity. But yeah, I, I like what you said. I, I want to I root for change. 
I want to root for a, a, a break in the cycle. I don't like seeing the same six head coaches pass around the league. Like anything new, Sirianni, Staley, like this is great news, but not at the expense of our of, of black coordinators and, and deserving black coaches. Bianami is his lack of a head coaching offer is beyond me at this point, especially now that the whole he doesn't call plays excuse is right. out the window, right? It's, it's Magic Johnson tossed behind his head, right? <laughs> Big Trav, what's next? The Bucks are the only team in the league with both African Americans and women in full time coaching positions. So how many of Bruce Arians disciples will become head coaches? What I really figured out is that Bruce Arians has hacked the system. All these other successful teams are concerned about losing their their coordinators, their head coaching jobs and getting their staff rated. It seems like it happens every year to Sean McVay's staff. Bruce Arians outsmarted y'all. He know you're not going to hire the black one. So continuity. What do you think, Marcel? It does seem like that. But you also would like to think that Todd Bowles gets another opportunity. Sir, he kind of crashed and burned uh, as head coach of the Jets. But how many people, how many other people crash and burn as head coach of the Jets? It's the Jets. I think Bowles has learned enough. He's seen enough and he's grown enough to deserve that next opportunity because don't get it twisted. Tom Brady is getting the headlines, but the Buccaneers defense is the reason why they've made it this far. The reason why they're in the Super Bowl and Bowles deserves an opportunity for what he's been able to do in Tampa Bay. I hope he gets another chance at some point, but we don't make those decisions, do we? <laughs> I mean, the people who do who do make those decisions, like I think that's how we solve the problem is someone needs to get into their minds and extract whatever biases or racism that they harbor. And once you do that, go ahead and spread it out to the rest of America. They could use it too. All right, Marcel, you know what time it is. Every week we challenge our guests to put their Twitter avatar on the line in a game we call Bet Your Abby. The loser of the bet has to make their Twitter profile picture whatever the winner wants for 24 hours. This is what we did to Kimberly. Look at her, looking like Bernie. That could be you if you don't choose right. So you know, we normally let the guests choose, but I'm not so sure how I feel about that. All right, Trav, what's the bet this week? For Super Sunday, it's a battle for the ages between the Bucks and Chiefs. No, literally the ages. Tom Brady is at least 100 years older than Patrick Mahomes. That's right, yeah. Who you got? Chiefs or Bucks for the Lombardi? Ah, man, I already know. I don't even have to ask you. You're going to take my man. <laughs> Go ahead. Who you got? I was about to say, is this like Family Feud where we both got hit the buzzer at the same time? Because uh, <laughs> I've been hovering over it. Of course, of course, I'm taking the Chiefs. My Abby is on the line. Of course, I'm, take, I'm taking Patrick LeVon Mahomes. But, uh, look, I, I think the Bucks are suited to get pressure on him. I think they can make life a little bit uncomfortable for him. But... It, it does not matter. The play ain't over until he hits the turf. As we saw the other night, oh, he man. could be halfway down and still sling something to Travis Kelsey 12 yards downfield. So I'm taking Mahomes. I'm taking the Chiefs. They're too high right now. Before we let you go, let's step into the culture corner real quick. Jamie Foxx made history as the first black animated lead in the Pixar film Soul. The film has been streamed 1.7 billion times. So here's the question. Who is the next black star that you think should be a protagonist in an animated feature? I got a great answer, Marcel, so I hope yours is good. I think Michael B. Jordan could make that transition. He's got a good voice. He's got the charisma, got the personality. I think he could successfully transition to the, uh, the animated screen, even when, you know, people stop deciding to put his face on camera. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. And I think I got a pretty good voice. I might be able to do some work. But if it's not me, I'm going to go with Freddie from a different world. Cree Summer. She is an all-time animated champ. She's been in everything from Loud House to Muppet Babies, Tiny Toons, Inspector Gadget, Rugrats, Teen Titans Go, the Ninja Turtles reboot, and one of my favorites, Transformers. She was Black Arachnia, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And also, never forget, College Dropout. She was on that Yeezy album. Well, she didn't sing or rap, but Yeezy referenced her. I mean, I don't know if you remember it, but I do. I can't fathom my love, dude. Lock yourself in a room doing five beats a day for three summers. It's a different world, like three summers. I mean, I got bars too. All right, Marcel. Okay. That, that was just a whole long con just so I could rap on TV. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. I appreciate you joining me at any time. I can't wait till next year to have you back, man, and stay safe up there. 
Hey, anytime. Appreciate it. You know it's snowing outside. I'm just trying to stay warm. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Undefeated on YouTube to catch up on previous episodes. You're welcome.